Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brendan, and in the midst of this flash crash, there's a lot going on. Most recently, we had the SEC decide to ban Kraken's staking platform, so Kraken is no longer going to be able to offer staking to its US customers. Bitcoin flew through the floor of its $23,000 support, and it's now down into the mid 21,000s. And on top of all of this, there are a lot of major mainstream companies that are holding more cryptocurrency than you probably think that they are. PayPal, for example, held $604 million in Bitcoin and other cryptos as of the end of 2022. So today, as always, we are going to be breaking down everything that's happening in the world of cryptocurrency and feeding it back to you in very digestible bites. So if that sounds interesting at all, make sure you stick around for the entire length of this video as there will be important information discussed the entire way through. But that being said, let's go ahead and start off with this Kraken news first, and then we can get into a little bit of technical analysis as to what's happening with the price and the charts side of Bitcoin and a couple of the altcoins as well. So with Kraken over here, this one is actually pretty interesting. Now, Kraken has had their staking platform for quite a long time time it's nothing new now the shocking thing is that they actually came to an agreement with the sec that would get rid of their staking now why is this a big deal number one they're one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges especially inside of the united states and number two i would say that they had one of the best centralized staking models that's out there and when i say centralized i mean of centralized exchanges i think kraken had one of the best options i think it was far, far superior than, than Coinbase's and definitely better than Crypto.com's. But why is this? Well, number one, they offered really high yields. They took a very small percentage of your staking for, um, uh, percentages that you would earn as a reward. And they would also offer uh, flexible staking periods, which a lot of other platforms wouldn't offer. They'd say that you need to lock up for an extended period of time, or they would just give you a very, very low percentage, but Kraken really gave you the best of both worlds. So for the people who liked to use a centralized staker, where they could kind of see everything add up over time and do it all from a single place, that's going to be a little bit harder now. And you're going to have to choose to either sacrifice between the length of, I guess, liquidity or even the amount of yield that you're going to earn. Now, if you go through a de decentralized party, then nothing's really going to change for you. You might just have to go through a couple different avenues. So instead of being able to stake everything in a single place, we're now going to have to go to a couple different options via a decentralized manner. But perhaps one of the most interesting things that was a part of this was that the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce, has publicly rebuked her own agency over the shutdown of crypto exchange crap, uh, Kraken staking program within the United States. So she came out over here and she was publicly saying like, well, like, what's the deal with this? Like, why are we doing this? This is kind of a disappointment. And she even said today the SEC shut down Kraken staking program and counted it as a win for investors. I disagree and therefore dissent. So very publicly saying that she is not for this. She disagrees with what's happening over here. And she even made a tweet about it, which we could check out as well. We see that Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase, is also chiming in with his two cents. And so the big question here is, are we going to see other major platforms, other major centralized platforms also have to get rid of this one as well? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Now let's move over to the charts over here because on the charts we can see that Bitcoin is very clearly breaking down. In the last three days we've seen a pretty steep fall off. In fact, if we want to measure this, in the past couple of days over here, Bitcoin's down just over 7%. Now what that realistically looks like is Bitcoin was hovering just over 23,000. We had been sitting above this level for a while, but with this breakdown, Bitcoin is now down below this back downs towards the bottom or really the mid range of $21,000. Now this is a bit of a familiar area. We've talked about this in previous videos. We've had this area up on our chart, but the big thing over here is that this is a previous resistance, not once, but actually twice. And so in the past experience, we came up, rejected this area, came up, rejected this area. And now we're coming down and hopefully going to use this prior resistance area of two separate times 
as a new found support. So again, previous resistance should and hopefully will turn into now support. On top of this, we have a golden cross happening on Bitcoin. I think this is going to be its own video for next week, but I want to give everyone just a little bit of a sneak peek advantage as to what's happening here. So there is a golden cross that has formed as of Monday, February 6th, 2023. And we'll make a whole separate video talking about what the golden cross means. In the short term, it could mean that we have more downside. But in the long term, I think that this is a good thing for Bitcoin. And again, we'll explain why in next week's videos. But there's a lot happening over here on this Bitcoin chart, as are a lot of altcoin charts as well. Uh, in fact, a lot of these mainstream altcoin charts look significantly different from things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So again, hopefully we see a bounce from Bitcoin from the support level. If not, it could probably fall another eh, one and a half, maybe $2,000 to the downside before it starts seeing a little bit more support. So maybe it falls towards the low end of 20s, high end of the teens, I would say, and probably find some more support in that area. So that's what's happening over here on the Bitcoin chart. And if we want to take just a quick glance at what's happening over here on Ethereum, Ethereum's kind of in the similar boat, right? It is at the bottom of its support range, and if this doesn't hold, it's likely going to fall back down to the 50 and the 200-day moving averages. Now, they just had their golden cross as of, I think it was either Wednesday or Thursday, so literally just a day or two ago, Ethereum had its golden cross. So we're starting to see these golden cross happen on uh, a lot of the different cryptos. It was just some of the smaller market cap altcoins that were really running in this bear market. Now it's starting to be some of the major market caps like Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are the leaders of cryptocurrency. So that's a good thing as well, but there's still a lot of support. I'd say there's support at 15,000, more support at around 1450, and then significantly more support around the 1300s, the 1200s, uh, and even more below that over in here. Now, on our final subject over here, PayPal held $604 million in Bitcoin and other cryptos as of the end of 2022. Now, why is this a headline at all? Well, what I don't think a lot of people understand is that a lot of these giant mainstream Fortune 500 companies, even governments, hold more cryptocurrency in the background then you would then you would be led to believe right if i didn't make this video my guess is that a lot of people would not have known that that paypal held this amount of bitcoin right but there's a lot of other companies that are in the exact same space and they hold part of their assets in cryptocurrency and so i think that as time goes on, this is going to be a much, much more common thing. I don't think we're going to see headlines like, can you believe that PayPal had um, $600 million in Bitcoin, half a billion dollars in Bitcoin? I don't think we're going to see titles like that. I think it's just going to become a normal thing for a lot of these big companies to diverse themselves into cryptocurrency. So as we're moving forward, keep an eye on that. In fact, if we wanted to do a whole list, we could pull a massive list of companies that have cryptocurrency on their balance sheets. So just something to pay attention to, just something to watch out for, especially as we move into the coming week over here. But as for the crypto markets as a whole, we are seeing a little bit of a fall. We could very well actually even continue to fall, um, especially if we break the little support levels that we are at right now. So as we're moving into the weekend, we could see a further breakdown. Hopefully we see a bounce from the support. If not, maybe we see another maybe 5% or so to the downside uh, before catching ourselves. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this little market update. I know I love making these. So if you do like them, uh, make sure you stick around. We have a lot more content just like this one coming out. In fact, we put out multiple videos a week every single week over here. So if you wanna join in, smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and as always, ask your comments and talk to each other in the comment section down below. It helps the algorithm and we love the community. So thank you all for watching and I will see all of you in next week's video.